Welcome back everybody to Panoi Crossover, your boy PJ, Marky Mark, but we have someone else in the chair. Hi. <laughs> Hi everyone. Mara, she's back in the studio. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. For a second time. time. I'm yeah. excited to have her second here all the time. time. Yeah. Marky Mark, you wrote some questions for Mara. <laughs> so let's see what it's about. Well, simple questions. I just we wanted to know what you've been up to recently, so we just wanted to hear since you had you in our show. Mm -hmm. What have you been up to? What was the past experience that you've had recently? You know what's really great was that the last time I was here, I was just here for three weeks, just visiting, mm -hmm. and it made me think, you know what, I think I should go back to Canada. So since I've left, what, when was that, 2010? This is the longest I've been back. So I got here May, so what, what is it now, October? That's five months. I've been mm -hmm. here for five months. I'm trying out new stuff, and what really amazes me is that now that it's summer, I get to go out there, the Filipino community has grown so much. Mm -hmm. I've gone to different festivals, uh, Taste of Manila, for instance, and just the community itself, how much it's growing. I see the potential in the future for what we could be doing here. So I... I'm going to see if, you know, we can do something in the yeah. future. And I know you left the Philippines, but let's talk about the missing of it. You were on court side. You're a PBA reporter. You were up there. Is there anything that you miss specifically about, you know, being in that broadcast like life? Um, I miss the lifestyle, definitely. Mm -hmm. You know how it is. The, the mm -hmm. lifestyle in the Philippines is different from the lifestyle here. I, of course, I miss it. I will be going back. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I had this thought of um, maybe we need to explore more and see, see what's out there. I really wanted to bring a Filipino, since I lived in the Philippines, mm -hmm. I wanted to bring that touch of the Philippines here in Canada. So I was hoping that my experience in the Philippines, I can bring it over here mm -hmm. and make stuff happen. So something great happened recently uh, for the very first time. I know that Coach Mike mm -hmm. was also yeah. um, a guest yeah, here before. Exactly. He's big in the Filipino basketball community. And for the very first time ever, we started the very first Tagalog edition of Blue Jays. We're calling it Blue Jays Pinoy edition. So it's the very first time that we have a Tagalog show for Blue Jays and it's history in the making, mm -hmm. yeah. basically. It's never been done before. And what Omni Television wanted to do was basically target the Filipino community and the immigrants, the, the people that have come here for mm. the first three years and get them into the Canadian culture yeah. through baseball. Mm -hmm. So as we all know, sports bring people together, whether it's basketball or baseball. So that's something really exciting that happened lately. It's pretty funny because she's wearing blue. blue. Yeah. She's the blue J. She's the J. <laughs> she's got the J. <laughs> what I did mean, you enjoy about being in the studio with, uh, and with baseball in general? Were you a baseball fan or what did you learn about baseball, I guess? To be honest, because mm. in the Philippines, there's uh, baseball doesn't have a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, I'll tell you um, the history behind it. Baseball was introduced to Filipinos first. Mm, before basketball? Before basketball. Wow. And apparently we were really, really good in baseball. We didn't mm -hmm. need height. Mm -hmm. And then basketball came along, but that's the sport that the Filipinos really, Stick. really got into. And that's what yeah. they loved. Mm -hmm. And then slowly, baseball started disappearing from the Philippines. I mean, we have a female um, team that... Mm -hmm participated in the Asian games that happened lately, mm -hmm. but it's still not as big as it basketball is. Mm -hmm. So here in Canada, if you think about it, geographically, because um, Canada's so big, the Canadians could be cheering for other teams, but because baseball, the Toronto Blue Jays is the only baseball team that we have, all over Canada, we're still cheering for the Toronto Blue Jays. And you know, that's, that's what we wanted to um, incorporate with the Filipino community basically to bring them over get interested in baseball get interested in sports And hopefully we see a lot more programs for the kids. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. That's awesome I mean uh, When you just something that you mentioned recently too, all the things that you learned that you wanted to kind of bring into Canada What are some of the things that you learned on your past experience in the Philippines being there for eight years? Having the lifestyle having that kind of experience being a broadcaster. What are some of the things that you want to bring here into Canada? Well, the main thing is I really think communication is a huge it's very important being a broadcaster. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I wanted to bring over, I've learned Tagalog, is the Tagalog language. Mm -hmm. Because the Filipinos, um, you guys are born here, right? Yes. So not everybody can speak fluently. But for somebody that's new, who's only been here for a year, two years, three years, you want to hear something in your own language. But what programs do we have um, that's being shown all over Canada that's in Tagalog and mm -hmm. not in English? 
So that's really one thing that I wanted to incorporate, just so people can, uh, the new Filipinos that are here can, can relate, can relate to the Canadian culture. So that's what I wanted to bring over. Like I, when, I, when I lived here too, I couldn't speak that much Tagalog mm -hmm. either. Yeah. But now, now that I can, yeah. and that's what I wanted. And also the Filipino touch, you know, the, the sayings that we have, mm -hmm. um, the type of things that they want to see in the yeah. program. Mm -hmm. So that's really something that I was really excited about with Blue Jays Pinoy Edition and also getting the, the, the audience involved, getting them to tweet about their thoughts mm -hmm. about the games and such. That's great. Your experience basically went 360. Like you said, you left Canada to went go there. to the Philippines, learn Tagalog, and you learned as you went, and then now you're back here. So it's kind of like kind of homecoming, and <laughs> yeah, now you're starting. It felt like LeBron amazing. James, you know? <laughs> yeah. He went out, left home to play for Miami, and now came back to uh, his hometown to kind of bring the ring, yeah. Talk about your audience, though. Has, has there been Filipinos reaching out, like, from oh. Canada to, to tweet it to you or to talk to you or...? You know what nakakabusog oh. ng puso means, right? Like, yeah. nakakabusog talaga ng puso. Yeah. When we see, we actually, one of the parts of the program is in between, in between the innings, mm -hmm. we get tweets from people sharing their thoughts and their experience. And a lot of people were thinking and saying that we've been in Canada for so long, this is the very first that we've seen this happen. Wow. And we're really happy that Tagalog is now being shown all over. So, um, just the people's comments and how they're saying that it's now becoming a family Sunday habit wow. to be watching together baseball yeah. with their dads and their uncles. And that's something that like, I'm really, really happy about that we're touching. It's not just in Toronto, but all over. Yeah. I wonder when will be the time where you can ask a Tagalog question to a Blue Jay. <laughs> oh <laughs> my God. I got them to say a few words. Oh, did though. you? Yeah, I got oh. them to say a few wow. words. And that was really cool. Yeah. That was really cool, yeah. When you were in the Philippines, like. Now that you're with the Blue Jays, they're all professional athletes. Let's talk about when you were in the PBA and you were doing, you know, social act, like going out in barangays. How was that experience? Is there anything that stands out when you were doing your outreach? Oh, when um, we were doing the outreach. Yeah. You know what? I was really amazed by how the PBA players, how grounded they are, how down to earth they were. Mm -hmm. um, basically, there's a new program for the PBA. It's called PBA Home Court. Mm -hmm. And this was conceptualized by the commissioner of the PBA, Willie Marshall. And basically what we do, we go to a different barangay and we surprise the people there. Wow, wow. And then all of a sudden, you see basketball players and yeah. PBA legends coming down the van, <laughs> yeah. socializing with them. And then you get to play a little bit. We, they have a contest and whoever wins will get free PBA tickets. Mm -hmm. wow. And it's really nice for PBA players, like for instance, Arwin Santos mm -hmm. or coach Vince Hison, going out there, talking to these kids in the barangay, inspiring them and telling them, I started where here mm -hmm. where you guys are at. We didn't have programs before and it made us happy to see a basketball player. And when I was younger, I dreamt of being a player. So I practiced every day and I worked really hard. And all of you can be where I am right now. And that's mm. very inspiring. Mm -hmm. For a little all, kid, yeah. For the kids, especially for the kids, because mm -hmm. all they need is one push, one encouragement mm -hmm. from somebody up there, from their idol, mm -hmm. to tell them, you can do what I'm doing and you can be where I am right now. And oh. it, it, it gives so you it that gives you motivation. Some energy. Yeah. And that's something that I really love because not yeah. everybody can afford to buy a PBA to buy tickets mm -hmm, to watch mm -hmm. the PBA and go out there. Mm -hmm. So it's something special. That's something that I really, really like. And I hope that that program doesn't stop. It's mm -hmm. great for the PBA players and the legends and the coaches to go out there and talk to the kids. I agree. I agree. I mean, mm -hmm. you've told us a lot of your past experience, but to, I mean, to end off the last question, we want to ask you. What are you? Uh, what is the next step for you? What's the next thing that's coming up for Mara Aquino? Oh my gosh! Okay, mm. so I've been in sports for six years. Um, it started with PBA courtside and CAA courtside PBA uh, Moneyball game show. Now baseball. So I'm in sports right now. But I really, but I really, really want to grow and create awareness is for Filipino martial arts. It's mm. called FMA, and a lot of people don't know what FMA is. It's the art that we develop, and that's what our ancestors used to defend themselves yeah. from um, the invasion before with the Japanese and mm -hmm. the Spanish. And right now, other arts are really popular. And um, I want people to know what FMA is, because not everybody knows what that is. It's yeah. basically mm -hmm. our niece with a stick, yeah. knife. You know what's really interesting is that's what they're using right now in Hollywood. So John Wick. 
um, Black Panther, mm-hmm. and the Avengers. So they use a lot of FMA. So I've learned from my grandmaster in the Philippines, and I have a grandmaster here to a Filipino grandmaster. And I want everybody to know, hey, this is our art, mm-hmm. and maybe I can get into action because. Mm-hmm. In movies, in storytelling, that's where you can create awareness mm-hmm. and you can create interest. Exactly. Things have to look appealing for others to be like, "Hey, what is that? I want to try that out." It's a beautiful art, and one day I want to become a grandmaster. Ooh, that's my goal. Nice. I want to teach and pass on this beautiful art to everyone, and I want to show Filipinos we have something great. We want to share it with everybody. Mm. What a way to end, what a way to end the interview, <laughs> man. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of a way I'm to inspired. like. <laughs> when she first time you came here, you talked about vision boards. Second, vision boards. You that's right. Vision boards, yeah. And now you're here. You're talking about being a grand master and passing on and tradition. Passing on. Art. That's just. Thank you for being on the Thank show, Mara. Thank you so much. Oh, Thank man. you so much. Anything you'd like to say to any uh, fans or any p- people that are watching? Well, I want to. Just tell everyone to keep supporting the Filipino community and keep supporting shows like this, Pinoy Crossover. The more support we get, the more we will grow and the more we'll have shows like this. So, supportahan po natin ang ating kapwa Pilipino at sana po ipagpatuloy nyo manood sa mga programang ganito para naman lumago, para naman mas dumami pa ang mga nagaganap dito, di ba? So, to all the Filipino Canadians, thank you so much and hopefully we have more episodes and more shows like this.